plant hoppers at a local industry and is trailing a caboose. Rare these days. Heading west is a manifest freight. The General Electric locomotives wearing two different paint schemes, the new Beaver logo and the twin flag schemes that preceded it. A loaded coal train heads west. The locomotive on the rear of the train is radio controlled by the engineer on the lead locomotive. Donald lies at the eastern approaches to the Selkirk Range of the Columbia Mountains. The town was named for Donald Smith, a CPR director during the railway's construction. Beyond Donald, the railroad runs alongside the Columbia River and is single tracked with passing sidings. Beavermouth is the former location of a helper station. Helper locomotives were added to westbound trains here to help them up the grade to Rogers Pass. The Columbia River Valley was flooded in the early 1970s when the Mica Dam was built, forming the Ken Basket Lake. The helper station was moved west to Rogers, but the location of the old grade can still be seen on the lake bed during the periods of low water. The point that the Beaver River enters the Ken Basket Lake is the most northerly point on the Canadian Pacific's transcontinental main line. In the late 1970s, increased traffic with heavier trains led CP to begin a massive project to reduce the grade for heavy loaded westbound trains over Rogers Pass. More than 10 miles of new track was built. This westbound train is on the new track, which starts at Frayne, just past the old Rogers helper station. An eastbound drops down the grade on the old track.
The grade separation can be seen clearly, with a westbound intermodal train on the new track, seen from a viewpoint on the Trans-Canada Highway. The old line crosses Stony Creek on a steel arch bridge, while the new line crosses the creek below it. The old Stony Creek Bridge was another favorite location of Nicholas Morant for CP publicity photographs. The original bridge was built in 1893, and a second steel arch was added in 1929 to accommodate larger and heavier locomotives. Because the CP line here is located in Glacier National Park, CP worked closely with the Canadian Park Service to minimize disruption to the park. The 4,031-foot-long John Fox Viaduct was built so that the new tracks would not have to be cut in to the hillside. The viaduct begins near Stony Creek and continues to the east portal of the Shaughnessy Tunnel. Trans-Canada Highway over Rogers Pass was completed in 1962 and is partially constructed on the old railroad right-of-way. Visible to the right of the highway is a masonry arch bridge over Cascade Creek. The railroad had a steep and difficult climb from both sides of the pass. Helper locomotives were needed and during the winter, avalanches were common. Over 200 people were killed by avalanches between 1885 and 1911. The railroad had to move the summit station four times before finally abandoning the pass when the Connaught Tunnel was opened in 1916. The tunnel passes directly under Mount McDonald and is named for Queen Victoria's third son, the Duke of Connaught, Governor General of Canada from 1911 to 1916. The tunnel was originally double-tracked, but was single-tracked in 1959 to accommodate the then-new automobile carriers.
The five mile long Connaught Tunnel is used by eastbounds and is basically straight on a slight descending grade. It cut more than 750 vertical feet from the original surface route over the pass. The machinery over the tunnel portal is blowers to remove smoke from the tunnel. At somewhat over nine miles, the Mount McDonald Tunnel is the longest in the Western Hemisphere. Built to reduce the westbound grade for heavily loaded trains and reduce the need for helper locomotives, it increased the westbound capacity of the line from 12 to 15 trains a day to about 24 trains a day. The tunnel passes through Mount McDonald and Mount Cheops before emerging on the west side of Rogers Pass. The Mount McDonald Tunnel and the Connaught Tunnel cross at different elevations inside Mount McDonald, almost directly under the mountain's 9,400-foot summit. At that point, there is about 5,800 feet of rock above the Connaught Tunnel, and about 6,200 feet of rock above the Mount McDonald Tunnel. The tunnel is concrete lined throughout and is tall enough to accommodate overhead wiring if CP ever decides to electrify the tunnel. The rails through the tunnel are laid on a concrete slab. As we emerge from the tunnel, the Rocky Mountaineer Tour Train is on our left. The Mountaineer is virtually the only train to head west of the normally eastbound Connaught track, and this gives the passengers a better view from the higher track. <laughs> 